Okay, so this lesson is on figurative language, and it is a review of uh, a figurative language that you learned last year. So, first we're going to look at similes. So, a simile is when you compare two things that are not alike using a comparison word such as like or as. It is important that they're not alike. Sometimes students want to compare um, a character or person to another person, just a different type of person. That's not really a simile. Um, and so, you really want to, in order, in order for it to be a simile, it needs to be figurative, meaning not true. So, if you said someone was brave like a fireman, well, I mean, you could be a fireman. It's not figurative, right? So, therefore, it would, it would need to be um, something that is not um, alike. So, clouds and ice cream are not alike. Or, uh, clouds in the ocean or the sky in the ocean are not alike. Those are two different things. So, person to person, not really simile. So, an example would be, we're like two peas in a pod. So, we're using our comparison word here, like. Um, well, we're not referring to peas, actually. We're referring to people. This is an expression that we use. It's also called an idiom. Um, and so um, we're saying that two people are so much alike that they're like two peas in one pod. So comparing them to peas in a pod, people to peas, not the same thing. This would be a simile. Our next uh, example of figurative language is a metaphor. So much like a simile, you are comparing two things that are not alike. Again... Um, but this time we're not using a comparison word such as like or as. We're just saying something is something else. So an example of this would be you are my sunshine. Okay, so we are comparing a person to sunshine, um, probably in the way that they make you feel if you're the one drawing the comparison. Um, and so people in sun is not alike. These are two different things. There's no comparison word, you just are sunshine. So that would be metaphor. Personification is a type of metaphor in which you give human characteristics to non-human objects or concepts. And this would include animals as well. So anything that's not human. It is not the other way around. So it's not giving a human animal-like characteristics. It is only giving something that's not human, human-like characteristics. Um, so this is a, a one-way thing. It doesn't go both ways. Um, and so we call that personification because we are giving something person-like characteristics. Um, and so an example of this would be our little friends, the M&Ms on the M&M commercials, right? With legs and hands and eyes and they can speak. M&Ms are not people. So when we give them human characteristics like that, we are personifying them. Okay, so... A hyperbole. So uh, students really, I find, often struggle with this. So if you find yourself struggling this year with hyperbole, don't get frustrated. Trust me, you'll do it again in eighth grade and you'll do it again in high school. Um, hyperbole is not figurative. It's just an exaggeration. So you're exaggerating something that is real, but it's an exaggeration. So you are um, blowing it up bigger than it is. So maybe there's a, um, you walked a million miles, right? You didn't actually walk a million miles. You maybe walked 10 miles, but it felt like a million miles to you. So you exaggerate it. Um, and so, but you still walked miles. It's not figurative. We're not drawing a comparison. Um, it is just an exaggeration of something that is real. So another example might be, it's so hot, I'm melting, okay? So this is an expression that you might hear somebody say on a 100 degree day, I'm melting, right? You're just so hot and maybe you're sweating really badly and it feels like your body's melting. It's not really melting. This isn't a comparison, okay? We're just exaggerating the reality of our situation. And that would be hyperbole. Onomatopoeia are words that sound like their meaning. So the words exist purely to be a sound, okay? So they represent a sound. Words like arf, yelp, bark, and wolf, okay? So whenever we, we uh, refer to noises that animals or nature makes, those would be onomatopoeia. Uh, 
inanimate objects like bells ring ring would be an onomatopoeia um, doors banging bang would be an onomatopoeia things like that a word that is a sound right the word itself means a sound and then alliteration okay is a little confusing I think so it's when words close together begin with the same sound but it must be a consonant sound it can't be a vowel sound and I think it's confusing because alliteration starts with a vowel. So a lot of times students think angry apple is alliteration. It's not. That is something else. We call that assonance. Okay, that's vowel sounds in words. Alliteration, <coughs> alliteration are consonant sounds. So something like brown bag would be alliteration, right? The Bs are consonant. So if you don't know your vowels, your vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. So any letter other than those would create alliteration. And then idiom is figurative language that isn't, so it isn't really true, okay? It's a metaphor of some kind, but it's become so well known that the metaphor is now a common expression. We use it all the time. So an example of this would be time flies, right? We say this all the time. Time flies when you're having fun, right? We say this all the time. This is a metaphor. Time can't really fly. We're comparing the speed of time to something that would fly, a plane or a bird or anything that would fly. But, okay, the, the speed of time passing. But in this case, even though it's a metaphor, it's actually something we would call an idiom because it's become such a common expression in our language that we don't even think about it anymore as being figurative. It's just like we say it, we know what we mean. That would be a metaphor that has become an idiom. Okay. Okay, so we will be working with figurative language all year. So again, if you struggle with certain ones, um, don't worry. We're going to do it so much by the end of the year. You will all master figurative language. Um, and if you need a more in-depth refresher on these, there are individual lessons that are available to you that, that looks at more examples of similes, more examples of metaphor, etc. So those are there as a resource for you if you need them.